A deadly combination, a blowtorch, propane tank, leaf blower, and bags of clothing. Erie County's top prosecutor today said that's how a large building caught fire on Main Street in Buffalo back on March 1st. It ended with 37-year-old firefighter Jason Arno losing his life. While the fire is now officially being called an accident, as you might guess, Arno's widow is shocked by the decision. In a moment, we'll hear from her attorney. Here, though, is what we know tonight. Two workers with JP Contracting were using the equipment on the outside of the building to melt the snow and ice around the bricks that they were working on. They did this on and off for about 45 minutes before one of them noticed smoke, according to investigators. They say the work they were doing is what caused the fire and that there was no sprinkler system or even fire alarm in the building. Also, the contractors did not have a permit. They apparently told investigators they didn't think they needed one because the work was considered an emergency due to some damage from an earthquake that hit a few weeks earlier in February. Now, this all sounds bad, but Erie County's District Attorney John Flynn said today that these are really permit issues and will not result in criminal charges. It is clear that arson is not applicable here because every single arson penal law has an element of intent. But what about negligence? Our Scott Levin obtained a statement from Jason Arno's widow, Sarah Tierney. She said that she was shocked and disappointed with today's decision and couldn't believe that this wasn't considered negligence. Scott talked with her attorney a short time ago. Watch. From our investigation, what we've uncovered appears it was extremely reckless, which is part of the standard in the criminal matter. And we thought there was enough evidence put forth from their investigation. They could have found the general contractors criminally uh, reckless and bring charges, criminal charges. We're pursuing the civil matter, but that doesn't mean there can still be criminal repercussions for the persons that started this chain of events. He added that Sarah and the entire family are devastated, hurt, and want accountability. Joining us live right now with some perspective on this is Barry Covert, a local defense attorney and two on your side legal analyst. Barry, great to see you as always. And we just rattled off there a bunch of the violations here, right? No permit, uh, no fire watch on the work site, no sprinklers, no fire alarm. Help us understand how that isn't negligence. Criminal negligence is very different from civil negligence. It's almost too bad that they use the same word. Because for there to be civil negligence, you just have to prove by a preponderance of the evidence that a party was negligent in relation to this matter. And I think that there's no question they have civil negligence all over the place here in relation to the owner of the building, the contractors, how everything was handled that day. I think there's no question of civil negligence. Criminal negligence, though, requires that there is a heightened level of negligence and a criminal jury not only has to find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, but they have to find and they will be specifically told by the judge that mere civil negligence is not sufficient. It has to be a gross deviation of the standard of conduct of a reasonable person. It is a very high standard when you put that standard together with proof beyond a reasonable doubt. While we certainly understand why the Arno family is disappointed as well they should be here. It is a such a high standard that it is understandable why the ATF investigation, the firefighters, the police, and certainly John Flynn, who, who you would think would want it to have brought criminal charges if they could and look for every way to see if they can meet that high, high standard for criminal negligence. They just couldn't. And it is understandable because the case law, the statute is very clear. It is a very high level of negligence that way beyond just civil negligence that has to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. And Barry, I want to ask you one other thing here, um, because it seemed like the DA today in this very lengthy press conference went over one of the defenses um, that would have been in play here had this turned into a criminal case. Listen to what he said here. They were aware of the potential risk and they did not disregard it because they used a shovel to try to block the flames. So Barry, he's saying there that they did not disregard the risk. They actually took this proactive measure to try to, to limit the risk. As a defense attorney, do you think that will be enough for you to fight against charges had they been filed, considering what you just explained to us, this very high standard? I would like to see all of the reports, obviously, but that being said, yes, it would be a very strong defense that we tried to protect the property against this exactly occurring. We did what we could. We thought 
that we had achieved the result we wanted and therefore we were not negligent to the heightened standard of criminal negligence where we disregarded the risk and it was way beyond just a civil risk of, of this occurring and that it has to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. So as a defense lawyer, yes, that is very good information for the defense of this case, as are all of the circumstances. There is no universe in which Mr. Flynn and the ATF and the Buffalo firefighters wanted to come to this conclusion that criminal charges could not be brought. But obviously, all of the evidence pointed them in that direction, and they felt as though criminal charges could not be sustained. Very different than civil charges. There is very little question that there will be civil liability by many parties involved here. Yeah, and that's something we will continue to follow. And of course, um, our, our thoughts and prayers with the Arno family as, as Western New York continues to, to mourn this loss. Defense attorney and two on your side, legal analyst Barry Covert. Barry, thanks for helping us understand this. Thank you. Thank you.